There are things that seem so self-evident that we never ask ourselves what the true story is, that we are ashamed to admit that we just don't know what the answer is. Taxis in New York are yellow, right? Of course they are. But why? Why is New York called the Big Apple? Who is Uncle Sam? How did it become the nickname of America? You think you probably know Uncle Sam, but his real story is fascinating. Hi, my name is Roy Mendel and I lead the research team at MyHeritage. For researchers, a database that includes millions of family trees and billions of historical documents going back hundreds of years is like going to Disneyland as a child. Any topic that interests you, you will find something on it. We have the privilege of choosing interesting historical moments or fascinating historical figures and using the archives to discover their true story. Uncle Sam's story begins on the eve of American Independence Day in 2015. We thought of ways to surprise the American public with a story about American heritage that the public thinks he know, but in fact does not. The search for ideas began with a very superficial brainstorming session. What do we know about America? What's the first thing that comes to mind when you think of the United States? Uncle Sam. Hi, I'm Mark Lowe. I'm a historian and family genealogist who lives in the southern U.S. We all know the picture of Uncle Sam, that resolute face and that top hat with the stars and that blue jacket and that red tie and that finger pointing at you saying, I want you for the U.S. Army. The poster has become the thing most identified with Uncle Sam, a synonym for the U.S. and U.S. military. Although there were several sketches of Uncle Sam, the definitive definition of him is he appeared first in a name format of the reference of Uncle Sam, and then later was characterized by the end of the 19th century as a somewhat resolute character that had been named based on an individual. The caricature that we see and recognize as that person today, it became the ideal character when a political cartoonist by the name of James Montgomery Flagg, who was a syndicated columnist who worked for the New York Times and other large papers in the country, he was very influential, number one, as a political cartoonist. But at the beginning of the century, as he was drawing and began to form that character and, and let him build the strength that he had, Flagg began to change him a little bit and give him a little more human characteristics in somewhat. Flagg recognized that the Uncle Sam character really became almost autonomous. He represented something so great that once Flagg found the right character, he didn't need to modify him anymore. So what if we will try to find the real man behind this figure? We did a Google search and found all sorts of hypotheses. One of them, which was repeated in studies over and over again, was that there was such a person who worked in the U.S. Army and his name was Samuel Wilson. So we decided to find it in the historical records and very quickly we found it. What now? Build a family tree and try to move down the tree in generation after generation until you find direct descendants who are still alive. My name is Trey Hopman, and I'm a descendant of Uncle Sam. So I have this poster hanging in my office. And every day, whenever I walk in, I get to see that poster, and it reminds me, what am I going to do today? You know, it says, I want you to join the U.S. Army, and here I am in the Navy. And it kind of gives me a chuckle every time I look at it. But I look at that, and I'm reminded of the actual story of Uncle Sam and who he was as a person. I think that that's the magic of genealogical research. The fact that everyone has a story, and in many cases, our personal story is one piece in the puzzle of a big picture. And there is a big and fascinating historical story in the background that is suddenly revealed. My name is Helen Hambican Painter. I am the granddaughter of Uncle Sam. He is actually my fifth great-grandfather. We got to Helen Painter pretty easily. 
census after census, we were able to add another generation and another generation, and then the obituary of her grandmother, through which we found about uh, the descendants of the family in Arkansas. Now, that's the most fun part in, the, in our job, calling a person who has no idea what you want from him, introducing yourself, trying to explain that this conversation is legitimate, and you just want to tell him something fascinating about his family history. When my heritage contacted me and confirmed what I had already known and was very excited about their interest in our family history. Now, in Helen's case, there were two options, both great. If she does not know, we revealed to her something very special about her family. If she does know, this means that the genealogical research was accurate, and even more so, that it is a story that has been in the family for generations. I was a little bit scared about putting myself out there, because often... I felt that people just thought of Uncle Sam as associated with the negative parts of the United States. When my son Trey was in school, he had to develop a report about family history. It was at that time that I took him over to my grandmother's house she brought out a little baby book and Bibles that showed these lineage lines and family trees to show where we were related to Samuel Wilson, to the great Uncle Sam. And it blew my mind. Even as a young kid, I really didn't understand the magnitude of what that meant. So I listened to all the stories uh, hanging on every word from my great-grandmother. I browsed through those, and i that was one of the first time I realized that, wow, he was an important man. The key, like many things in life, is curiosity. Curiosity to know where we came from, why we do what we do, not take anything for granted. Many times the answers are there, in the closet or in the drawer, in the old albums and in the old documents. Samuel Wilson's grandfather, Robert, settled in Massachusetts, where in 1665 they bought a farm. He had two children, Lucy and Edward. Edward had 13 children. The fifth was Samuel Wilson. Uncle Sam was born September 13, 1766. He was born in Massachusetts, lived in New Hampshire for a while, and later moved to Troy, New York. There he became a very talented entrepreneur. He successfully had at least five businesses. He was a man who everybody looked at and said, that's what I want to be like. He was a brick mason. He owned a distillery. He owned a butcher shop. He was a farmer throughout all of the Northeast. He was a manager that everyone loved. The city loved him. Everybody knew who Samuel Wilson was. He started the meatpacking business in 1793 with his brother in New York. By this time, he was a very active member of the Troy community. He was loved by the population and had 100 plus employees who had nicknamed him Uncle Sam. Almost 20 years later, the War of 1812 broke out between England and the United States. The American Revolution was something that was great in America and it was going against the tyranny of the English. And it was a community that actually wrapped together and held as one, fighting for something greater than themselves. He became part of the Revolutionary War and in that process, there was a need for supplies to the army. There was a man called Elbert Anderson, who was a government supplier who contracted with Samuel Wilson to supply the army meat. When the barrels were shipped, they were stamped with the initials E-A-U-S. 
EA was the government supplier, hence Albert Anderson, and U.S. was stood for the United States. So where did the name came from? Used to sign the delivery of the meat, U.S., United States, and the soldiers with humor called it Uncle Sam. Bingo. Most of the meat that was supplied by the Wilsons was in the same area of Troy and Greenbush, New York, where everybody knew the Wilsons. They knew who they were. And so some of the soldiers began to, probably in some deliveries, even recognize that the deliveries of meat were by people that they knew. And somehow it began ultimately then that EA, the U.S., that mark, it became Uncle Sam. That's Uncle Sam's meat. And so as a result of that, any time there was a U.S., all those folks began to spread the word. And so even though Samuel Wilson didn't live long enough to see all the stories about him come to fruition, by the beginning of the Civil War, we're continuing to look in the division that we had in the country. We're still looking for the unifying factor. And the unifying factor was Uncle Sam, U.S. I have gone to Troy, New York. They have shared a lot more information with me about who the real man Samuel Wilson was and why he was so important. It made me realize the importance of being a good human being, doing all you can for your community, whether it be big or whether it be small. Just do your part. Enjoy what you're doing. So through my military career, I've had the opportunity to get stationed a lot of different places. Well, I was stationed in Newport, Rhode Island a couple of years ago, and my mom kept telling me, you've got to go to Troy, New York. You've got to go see where Uncle Sam is buried in in the actual family uh, areas. So I drove up there, and I was able to go visit the cemetery and, and see where Uncle Sam was buried and walk through Troy, New York, and seeing all of these posters and all of these paintings on the sides of buildings. And even went to a, uh, it wasn't a distillery, but it was a brewery. And of course, it was called Uncle Sam's. And I enjoyed my pint and walked out and walked the streets for probably another 45 minutes to an hour and a half, just up and down the streets to know Uncle Sam used to actually walk these streets the same as I'm doing right now. In our research team at MyHeritage, we tend to say that there is no person who does not have an amazing family story at the level of a documentary. Sometimes the story is on the surface and all it takes is to blow off some dust and sometimes you have to dig deep enough to uncover it. Every day I'm reminded of what Uncle Sam is and how he has inspired me. And if I can do that one little thing to actually make somebody smile, Maybe that legacy will actually last just like Uncle Sam's. I think the fact that we were able through genealogy to find the descendants of the real man behind Uncle Sam makes this all-American icon from myth to reality. When you understand that the basis of myth in your culture is a true story based on real characters, you understand the immense value of preserving family history and passing on information to future generations. (laughs) 